And now we're going to turn to someone who deals in facts, very much so. Um, he is the lead researcher on, the, or one of the lead researchers on that convalescent plasma study that has been getting so much attention. As we talked about yesterday, the FDA issued an emergency use authorization for convalescent plasma to treat coronavirus. We're joined now by Dr. Michael Joyner. He is a professor at the Mayo Clinic. He has many other titles as well, and he was intimately involved with this study. We were also uh, joined by our Anjali Kamlani to speak to us about this. Dr. Joyner, you just have to unmute. Um, I, I read that um, the study has now been discontinued as a result of um, this special authorization from the FDA. Um, can you confirm that for us and, and tell us where you go from here? Yes, we started as uh, an expanded access program. The expanded access program is transitioning off. We'll enroll our last patients on Friday, and our last transfusions will occur on Monday as the program transitions to an emergency use authorization. And it'll be easier for physicians and patients to get uh, plasma uh, should they need it. Dr. Anjali here. Uh, it looks like this is also a result of sort of a dilution of the participant pool because with the EUA, um, you're not going to be able to really enroll. Um, does this also disrupt the potential for a randomized placebo controlled trial? You know, the randomized placebo controlled trials or the randomized trials had been struggling to enroll prior to this. And in sites that were not a part of the expanded access program, and even in other countries where there is no expanded access program, accrual has been challenging. Uh, there are still a number of trials going on in the outpatient space and in the early disease state, uh, state that will not be affected by this. And of course, individual institutions will be at liberty to either offer or not offer plasma as part of the EUA and conduct or not conduct randomized controlled trials. Doctor, th this um, convalescent plasma was described by the president as a breakthrough. How would you characterize it and, and how big of a tool is it going to be in fighting coronavirus? I think uh, what I would describe it as is a rediscovery. Um, products like convalescent plasma have been used since uh, the 1890s to treat various forms of infectious disease. And if you had an infectious disease like a pneumonia, the flu, meningitis, prior to antibiotics, 1920s, 1930s, you frequently would have been treated with a product like convalescent plasma, where it was generally known to be safe. And, and just like our study showed, it was best to be treated early within three days of infection. And it was important to get high quality antibody product. So I see this more as a rediscovery of key principles that were known before the antibiotic era and mostly have been forgotten. And again, rediscovered uh, through the expanded access program. One of the key questions, I think, has been sort of the characterization of the results of the study. Uh, Commissioner Hahn, as well as Secretary Azar, have come under fire for uh, what seems like, a, you know, explaining it uh, incorrectly. Can you clarify what the results actually do show when it comes to uh, the mortality rate and other uh, statistics? C correct. So I think one of the problems is people... Uh, uh, not specifying where they're talking about absolute risk or relative risk reduction. And what we typically see is that if people uh, in certain uh, subgroups of the expanded access protocol are treated early within three days of diagnosis and given high quality plasma, that their relative risk of death can be reduced somewhere between 20, 25 to even 40, 45%, depending on the group and so forth. But that you got to remember, that means going from something like 15% to 9%, not, not uh, uh, 70 to 35%. And Dr. Joyner, just to be clear here, it sounds like, you know, throughout this whole thing, we have looked at the various companies that have, that are working on vaccines, or that have made various um, potential therapeutic therapies, uh, therapies for, for coronavirus. In this case, it's, it's just the hospitals and the treatment centers that are doing this, right? In other words, it's not as though a pharmaceutical company makes this stuff. It's made by people. People, and, and it's collected by uh, blood bankers and, and processed in a way that can be um, administered to patients, just like regular, regular what we call fresh frozen plasma uh, when we do uh, a clinical medicine. Dr. Michael Joyner, thank you so much for your perspective on this. Uh, obviously, as I said, you are uh, intimately associated with this study, so it's helpful to get some clarity on all of this. Dr. Michael Joyner of the Mayo Clinic, thank you. Thanks so much.
Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.